Bhutan had been following a very closed door kind of a policy until the 1960s. Barter economy and uh, subsistence farming, that's what the whole of the nation was doing. 90% of the country or the 90% of the population was engaged in agriculture. Bhutan opened up its economy in the 1960s, early 1960s, that's in 1961. With that, we started our five-year plans. And uh, the influence of modernization, the influence of you know, the construction of basic infrastructure, construction of schools, hospitals, started then on. And important uh, government institutions like the National Assembly of Bhutan, the Royal uh, Bhutan Police, the judiciary, it was established thereafter. There has been, there was enough job opportunities during those period of time. People could get jobs easily into civil service. People who had, you know, who could basically read and write, they could, they could ha hold important posts in the, in the civil service, in, in the country. But not so long ago. Let me share what my dad always tell me and what his experience had been. My dad, he completed his eighth standard he was forced or he was mandated by his teachers to get into civil service. That was in 1980s. That was in the early 1980s. However, today there is a shift in the there is a shift of employment from agriculture to the other sectors. Today, if you look at Bhutan, 66% of the country, country's population is into agriculture and the rest are in the other sectors. However, the other sectors have failed in creating employments. And there are lots of youths who are coming in the market and there is a mismatch. The mismatch is there is enough of hard labor skilled job, but there's not much of youths who want to take up. So that's a challenge. Not many of them want to get into hard labor job. That's, that's a big, big challenge in our context now. Bhutan, as a state, is in a transition. Transition from monarchy to the constitutional democracy. Bhutan, my country, is admired worldwide for its living, spiritual, and rigorous pursuit of gross national happiness. But again, we have our own set of problems. Like I mentioned early, earlier, with modernity, consumerism has hopped in. So because of consumerism, we have a lot of issues now. The Focus issue that we have, the problem that we today have is the transition from school to work for the students or for the, for the graduates especially. There are, there's a huge number of students graduating from schools, from the colleges, from various institutions per se. But there's not much of jobs in the market. And the youth, the, the, the youth unemployment today, if you look at it, it is somewhere around 7.1% in the country. And if you, if you cross-check, it's one of the highest in the region. Of course, a very small country, but that's with big challenge. And the youth employment is concentrated mostly among the educated lot. And the economy that we have could not create jobs. And there's a lack of consistency 
in the outcome of educational system and the demands of the job in the market. In the last decade, our economy did not contribute to youth employment, though there was vast you know, growth in the growth for uh, growth in demand for manual labor, but uh, there wasn't many who want to take it up. The educated youths did not want to associate themselves with agriculture or farming and in the construction industry. Let me talk something about uh, the youths in Bhutan. But youths in Bhutan have been playing a very vital role in the country. As a member of parliament myself and as a young member of parliament in the, in the parliament of Bhutan, we meet with a lot of stakeholders and uh, I'm also a member in Women, Children and Youth Committee in the parliament. So when we have to table any kind of bills or any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, uh, issue that, that needs to be presented in the parliament, we basically uh, have to, in fact, we are mandated to talk to the stakeholders. So any issues that pertains to women, children, and youth. So some of the youth groups that we, you know, constantly meet are, you know, there's like, you know, there are examples like, you know, Go Youth, Go Youth Initiative, Vaivya, and Taisan, and all that. And uh, they, ha they have been making a lot of positive contributions in the nation, to the nation. Some of the contributions include public cleaning campaigns. There is a group called YI, it's called Youth Initiative. They helped this disabled to you know, build wheelchair ramps. There are also other contributions like collection of books from the urban places and distributing, distributing it to the rural schools. These are some of the contributions and they are playing very active role. And the youth generation today are better informed because the level of education from what we were in 1960s to what we are today in the 21st century, that's in 2015, we have grown a long way. We have a big number of educated lot. I mean, we have a huge number of educated people, especially the youth. Today in Bhutan, if we look at in the population aspect, we have 47.4% of its population under the age of 25. Similarly, if you look at South Asia as a region, it ranges from 40% to 65%, and that's a big potential we have. That's, that's a big opportunity for this region. We are very young. But on the other hand, if we do not tap the potential that we have, it can be disastrous for us. It can be socially chaotic for us. It can be highly uneconomical for us. So the role of education and the emerging you know, young population and of course the macro environment that we, have living, living, we are living in, the, the in ecological aspect, the environmental aspect, the social and uh, cultural aspect, the technological aspect, it has been changing over the time. In the, recent, in the recent years, there's a, uh, there's a development in one field, that's social media. And it is very popular among our youths. And your youths have taken, a, taken, out, uh, taken up to heights. Let me cite an example in Bhutan. Last year, that's 2014, a group of social you know, active social media users started, you know, an online petition using Facebook. And the petition that they used during the thing was, in 2014 was, they wanted a legislation where they wanted a legislation to, to have a stronger legislation for abuse of drug and drug traffickers. And we were obliged as government, as members of parliament, as representatives, 
we were obliged and we had to table a bill called Narcotic and Psychotropic Substance Act 2014. Allow me to share my observations. The first observation is there's a gap. What you study in your colleges or what your education system has to provide and what the job market provides are two different things. Generally speaking, our youths do not have, our youth do not have the necessary skills that organizations or industries require. So, in this context, I would like to narrate a story of Mr. Giri. He, Mr. Giri, he completed his 10th uh, standard. He could not qualify for a government college. And uh, he opted to get into a vocational training institute. It's called VTI in our context, in Bhutan. So it's a diploma course. So he did his diploma. That's two years of diploma. And uh, he, he got his electrical diploma. And today, he earns 8,500 Neil Trump. That's rupees 8,500. That's his, that's his salary. But what interesting thing that he says to me is, he told me is, that he earns, he works part-time as well. So he has many sites where he visits and works for. So when he goes for that, and uh, I asked him how much, you know, casually I asked him how much do you earn, and he says, in a day I earn Neil Trump 1,500. Rupees 1,500 per day, and that's quite a lot of money. Talking about uh, the unemployment aspect, the other day I was reading a paper, and uh, it was about this UP clerical jobs, where they had 368 uh, job vacancies or posts available. But what was very alarming was the number of applicants that, who applied for the post. It was, as if I'm not mistaken, it was some 2.4 million of them. It would have taken at least four years for them to take the interview itself. So such is the problem here. And similarly, in my context, let me share my own personal experience. After my bachelor's degree, after my MBA, I went to Bhutan. I was, I gave an interview for the post of uh, marketing manager in a newspaper called The Bhutanese. The number of uh, applicants, at least in our context again, for a small firm like a newspaper company, it was alarming. Then it was more than 1,000 applicants for a post like marketing manager in a newspaper, in a small newspaper company. So such is the level of unemployment and competition in Bhutan. So, and it is even more severe now. As a young member of parliament myself, I am accessible to a lot of youths through various means. People come to meet me personally, some through chats, some you know, they come at home, drop by, and ask. They basically request for jobs. They, they, want, they, want, they, they come and say, you know, please help me out with a job. Please help me out with a career placement. Many of times, I've tried doing it, but good number of times I've failed, and failed it miserably. On one side, there's a job seeker who keeps on saying, you know, I want a job, I want a job, I want a job. The other side, I go to an employer and talk to them, and this Employers, they have their own set of, you know, problems. They say, your candidates do not have skills. Necessary skills that the organizations want. We want someone with skills, but you do not have that. And you go to the, again, uh, job placement, you know, agencies and talk to them, and they have their own grievances to share again. They say, yes, our, you know, graduates do not have the skills. They the lack of skills, the, number, the required skills is this one, and you don't have it. And uh, what do you do? 
you are helpless a good number of times. I have failed miserably. This is my testimony before you all. And the problem that I see, this is an observation again, the problem that I see is the education, how it has come over the years, how Bhutan, you know, Bhutan got into that developmental stage, how we have changed over the time, the transition from everyone getting a job to no one getting a job, or maximum not getting a job. So we are getting into severe problem. So jobs that were very popular during the 80s and the 90s, it's obsolete now. So in such transition, it is imperative to learn the art of skills and entrepreneurship. So the call to action, I have three recommendations or call to action before the audience here. The one is at the societal level. The first thing that uh, comes to my mind when it comes to society, it's all related to stigma. When you are talking about a white collar job and a blue collar job, there's always a distinction. Don't do that job. That's only low level people do it. That's the society we live in. That's the kind of attitude and that's the kind of mentality we have. So the first call on is we have to paralyze such social stigma. And on the second note, on the government level, there's a need to develop training skills for our youths. There's need to emphasize on the vocational training institutions like uh, the former speaker was talking about. And in Bhutanese context, the other thing is, once a diploma holder completes his diploma, he or she cannot upgrade it further. He cannot get into, you know, let's say he wants to get into, let's, he wants to do his bachelor's degree. He cannot do it. He wants to further upgrade into maybe do his master's or PhD. There's no such possibilities. And I think at the government level, there is a need to look into this and make it possible for upgradation. And to the youth of this region, of, this, of, of Bhutan, and to the youth of the region, I would like to propose before you all that it is imperative that the youth should take keen interest in entrepreneurship and self-employment. And uh, you have to understand the youths today that it is not just the skills, not just the hard skills or soft skills or education that matters. It is at the end of the day, individual passion, your interests, and the work that matters. Thank you. Thank you all.